Uh, my name is Wang Chao, uh, and it's uh, now my great pleasure and honor to introduce you Dr. Zhou Weiping. Dr. Zhou received his MD from Tongji Medical School and got his PhD from the University of Paris for Immunology. Then he moved to Baylor Research Institute in the United States and did his post research there for immunology. Now, Dr. Zhou is Charles B. D. Nagrid, Professor, Professor of Pathology, Immunology, Biology, and Surgery at the University of Michigan. Dr. Zhou's lab investigates the human cancer microenvironment with the goal of understanding the nature of human tumor immune responses and developing combination therapies for cancer. Dr. Zhou has delivered more than 300 invited lectures at different institutes um, and uh, conferences and published more than 200 papers and book chapters, including many, many articles in Nature, Science, and Cell. His lab is one of the most cited research teams in the field of immunology. And his work has been highlighted also by many, many scientific news agencies. One of his most well-known studies, I think, was published in Nature in 2004, specific recruitment of regulatory T cells in ovarian carcinoma fosters immune privilege and predicts reduced survivals. This single original work on T-Rex has been cited more than 5,000 times since its publication. Obviously, Dr. Zhou has made seminal contributions to his to our understanding of immunosuppressive mechanisms in the tumor microenvironments. His early concept of combinatorial immunotherapy uh, strategies has laid the foundation for current cancer immunotherapies and has provided rationales for novel combinations. Uh, the, the title of uh, Dr. Zhou's talk today is metabolic impact uh, on cancer immunity and therapy. Um, please join me in welcoming Dr. Zhou. Dr. Zhou. Right, uh, thank you very much. Can you hear me well? Yes, yes. Well, uh, thank you, Chong, for your introduction. Uh, I also appreciate uh, Xiaoni and uh, Chuan and other folks uh, organizing uh, this uh, communication platform, which is absolutely fantastic. Uh, very, very useful. So in this case, we don't go, we don't have to go anywhere and we are able to communicate with a lot of friends. So uh, this is uh, absolutely fantastic. Uh, thank you very much for doing so. Uh, I hope uh, we can participate more this type of activities and support each other. I think this is not only important uh, for our own, but also for the community. So I uh, appreciate again, again, and thank you very much for this. So today I will uh, provide a relatively focused talk, uh, metabolic impact on cancer immunity and therapy. Um, so uh, when we reveal the history of cancer therapy, let's say past and present future, we know we have uh, come from a long way. So early on, we have surgery, then radiation therapy, hormone therapy, chemotherapy, and targeted therapy. Recently, we have immunotherapy. So people always ask, what is next? So in fact, when we review the history of uh, cancer therapy, we know in each important breakthrough, therapeutic step, it is always basic science behind. For example, when we do surgery, it's really because of anesthesia. So when you read the slides, you see radiation, it's because of the discovery of basic physics and biology of X-rays, proton sources, and the hormone therapy, and the chemo, and the immunotherapy, all because of very basic uh, scientific discoveries behind. So therefore, what we are thinking what is next? We all know it will be based on basic scientific discovery. 
So recently, uh, the folks, particularly in the field of cancer biology and therapeutics, have proposed concept in terms of new therapeutic approaches. For example, one way is to stop cancer cells to death to get a lot of attention in the field. So uh, I will talk about this and I will say this approach may not be so easy. So in fact, when we talk about uh, basic discoveries early on, many of you may know are uh, immune tumor immunology or tumor immunity in the field, basically a lot of people early on, even ourselves, did not believe the very, exist, the very existence of tumor immunity. So it was a dark age of tumor immunology, basically, when I started my faculty job. So since I have been in the field for a while, I have some review articles uh, in this area and uh, covers basically um, quite a few topics. Of course, we have not only revealed our own work, but also many studies from many friends and colleagues in the field. So I know many of people are getting, getting into the field. And uh, if you read some of the review articles, you may know what has happened and, uh, and what's going on actually. So just for your reference. So in fact, uh, uh, my group has been working on only one simple concept. It means uh, cancer microenvironment holds the key to understanding tumor immunity and therapy. At this days, this concept has been very well accepted, practiced. In the old days, this is not easy, as I said, uh, in the dark age of uh, cancer immunology and immunotherapy. Uh, people cannot believe it. So based on this concept, uh, let's say to address this concept, we have been working on different uh, research directions. So one is immunosuppressive mechanisms, immunosuppressive networks. The application example is PD-1, pd one Then cancer epigenetic mechanisms, key immunogenic pathways, and the metabolic pathways. Uh, in the recent years, we spent a lot of time on uh, the fourth topic, metabolic pathways and T cell immunity and cancer therapy. The whole point is really to understand better the cancer microenvironment and whether we are able to target the environment to give any hope to the patient with cancer. So um, early on, when I started my own group, I have uh, received quite a lot of support and collaborations from senior uh, scientists in the field, including Ye Bin Chen. Actually, uh, uh, we have published quite many papers together. This is one of them. Uh, uh, early 2003, we published a paper uh, showing pdl one expression recognition and blockade in the human cancer microenvironment. Um, this is a uh, is the first paper talking about human uh, PDL1 in the cancer microenvironment in humans, in the human tumor training influence. So, in fact, in this paper, we clearly pointed out uh, if you block B7H1 pathway, it means PDL1, you can recover the T cell functionality, including IL2 production, independent gamma production, and the killing capacity against the autonomous tumor. Uh, we propose blockade of this pathway represent one approach for cancer uh, immunotherapy. So it's, this is uh, basically uh, 18, almost 20 years ago. Uh, it is this, if you look at uh, PDL1, you will not be able to find this paper because it was named B7H1 by Nipin. Uh As I said, this is one of the uh, studies we have uh, collaborated with Napin early on, but this is very important. There's no controversial actually here. And we said it very clearly. We just didn't provide a, a detail exhaustion term, but uh, we just said these cells are dysfunctional in the tumor environment. We can recover the T-cell dysfunctionality by uh, uh, through uh, uh, 
uh, H1 protein. Uh, so I probably give uh, the four research directions each, I give you one example, and I will, I will focus on the metabolism. So the second research direction we are working on is cancer epigenetics. So what we want to understand, basically, we want to understand uh, if the basic, the most well understood uh, epigenetic mechanisms can contribute to tumor immunity in the human cancer microenvironment. So it turns out what we discovered similar to the TH1, TH2 reciprocal recognition, we discovered one complex called PRC2. One example is EZH2. Another complex is Swiss-Sniff complex. And it's, it's, it's example is RBD1A. So these two complexes can reciprocally recognize each other and control interference signaling TH1 type of chemokines and T cell traffic and, and tumor immunity, uh, this reciprocal recognition uh, occurred at the biochemical level, functional level, and the genomic level. And we have demonstrated through several publications uh, in this area. And therefore, uh, we uh, propose, uh, we, make, we can, uh, we program epigenetic mechanisms to get therapeutic benefit which I uh, don't have time to go to the details. Then the third research direction uh, is the key immunogenic pathways in the cancer environment. Because we know those key immunogenic pathways, we are determining the outcome of immune responses. Two major key uh, immunogenic pathways, one is in the film pathway, as you all know, Basically, without in the film, without the cancer immunity. Another is a stat pathway. And of course, without stat pathway, the T cells will not be really functional and uh, can mediate tumor immunity. So I'll give you one example of what we, are, we have been doing. The thing is, uh, for those who are in the field of medical oncology and uh, cancer immunology, we know MHC pathway and the interferon signaling integrity, including interference signaling pathway gene mutations uh, contribute to therapeutic resistance to uh, immunotherapy. But when you look at the mutations in MHC and the interference signaling pathway, the vast majority of the patients do not have mutations. It's a small fraction of the patients. Therefore, the uh, mutations of interferon pathway or MHC pathway cannot be used to explain uh, the resistance to immunotherapy in many, many patients. So what we discovered, in fact, uh, uh, in patients with uh, colorectal cancer, for example, we found uh, one gene, uh, optinurin, get lost in patients with colorectal cancer. This loss of optinurin occurred gradually from adenoma to carcinoma, from normal to adenoma and uh, to carcinoma. So once the gene get lost, this severely affect the integrity of interferon and interferon receptor signaling pathway. It consequently affect the MHC presentation. And uh, you can see here, what we uh, discovered as a mechanism actually, it turns out that uh, if we don't have opportunity, then the interferon receptor uh, stability uh, is affected and uh, through the nest zone degradation. And uh, there is an interaction between uh, uh, the sorting protein, nest zone sorting protein, AP3D1, uh, interaction with the interferon gamma receptor, uh, which uh, I really don't want to get into the details. For those who are interested in this, you can read our paper. Uh, in this case. So all what I want to say, the immunogenic pathway, uh, it's very key to tumor immunity. It's, it's not only about the interferon signaling and MHC mutations, it's more about their functional integrity. Now, uh, the fourth part will be uh, my focus of this talk. 
amino acids and uh, they are transporters in tumor immunity and cancer therapy. I'm going to share uh, two stories in a very uh, brief uh, format. One is Cystin XC. Uh, it has two uh, ACLC family members, 7A11 and 3A2. And the second story is ACLC 43A2. So before I talk about the first story, I need to introduce one concept to you, means uh, phytoptosis. Phytoptosis is an iron-dependent lipid balance induced cell death. Uh, this has been defined uh, with uh, synthetic compounds in vitro. So the in vivo phenomenon is very uh, poorly understood. But what we know, it is based on uh, many publications um, uh, in vitro, uh, uh, system XC, GBX4, ACSL4, and other genes are involved in the recognition of uh, cell phytoptosis. There is no specific marker to define phytoptosis. What we usually define may be three uh, criteria. Uh, so one is called the uh, You have to have nibidros production. Then you are able to detect the ox that's nibid. And uh, finally, we are able to functionally examine the phytoptosis. So we asked a very simple question. We know CD8 T cells interact with their target cell, such as tumor cells. So one classic best way is CD8 T cells interact with tumor cells. And activated CD8 T cells can release perforin in the grand B. Uh, therefore, activated caspase induce tumor cell apoptosis. Very classic. The question we are asking is, can phytoptosis be one of the mechanisms or be involved in the interaction between uh, CD8 T cells and the tumor cells? So what we did, it was a simple way. Uh, we uh, get ID8 tumor cells in the mouse model, in vivo, treat the tumor bearing mice. You see uh, with immunotherapy, uh, we see tumor control not a surprise. Under this condition, before the tumor cells were killed, we get the tumor cells out, we detected uh, nevidros uh, in the tumor cells. So you see immunotherapy can stimulate the expression of nevidros. This is a uh, uh, PD-1, PD-L1 protein. Then we did the T-cell model as well, it means the T-cell transfusion experiment in P16 model. You can see here, with all E1 cells and to the over expression B16, of course, you control the tumor. And under this condition, the tumor cells also express ROS, nibid ROS. Then we did a uh, in vitro direct culture as the all E1 cells cultured with B16 over cells. And we detect ROS expression. And you see all E1 cells can induce uh, ROS in tumor cells. And if it's antigen, past and uh, the expression level is even higher. And under this condition, you measure tumor cell deaths, it's a killing assay. Uh, you see uh, actually only one cells can kill the tumor cells. Of course, not a surprise, uh, but this is a very small, um, uh, 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 a small number of, uh, of, of uh, only one cells. Interestingly, if you, under this condition, small amount of uh, uh, RSL3, this is a phytoptosis inducer. You also induce small cell deaths. However, if you put them together, you really see dramatic tumor cell deaths. These dramatic tumor deaths can be completely blocked by phytoptosis inhibitor called phytostatin 1. So, uh, in this case, what we conclude, phytoptosis could be involved in. CD8 T cell mediated tumor kin. Then uh, we are not that confident uh, because usually it's a, it's a, it's apoptosis, and we use the apoptosis inhibitors, phytoptosis, all kinds of inhibitors to do the in vitro studies. Then we first did uh, two models in vivo. So one model is actually uh, immunotherapy model with PD1, PDL1. Under this condition. We treat the mice with uh, nebrostatic uh, phytoptosis inhibitor. So you can see here, the therapy works, of course, not a surprise. 
But what is a surprise? If you inhibit ferrotosis, you abolish the effect of immunotherapy. This is absolutely a huge surprise for us. Uh, I asked my fellow, uh, did again and again, because it's, uh, it's really uh, 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 incredible. So then we did another way, means we induce tumor cell resistant to ferroptosis in, in vitro, similar to, to those who are doing the chemo resistant cells. You catch the tumor cells with no concentration of ferroptosis inducer for a long time, then the cells are becoming resistant to ferroptosis, at least in vitro by ferroptosis inhibitor. Then we do immunotherapy again. You see here, uh, parental cells are responsive to immunotherapy. Uh, the resistant cells are no longer responsive to immunotherapy. So the conclusion we have, uh, ferroptosis inhibition can attenuate immunotherapy efficacy. It needs ferroptosis mechanism it, it's one of the mechanisms of immunotherapy. So then we first look at uh, the molecular mechanisms and we went through several and uh, to make a story short and it turns out the interferon pathway is very critical because here, if you make a tumor cell knock out the interferon gamma receptor, then you capture the cells with only one cell or with uh, ferroptosis, small amount of ferroptosis inducer, no matter what you do, and the tumor cells no longer express uh, nibidros, the tumor cells are no longer sensitive to, to, to those uh, body one uh, cell kinin. So this means interferon is involved. And further, uh, we detected uh, oxidase inhibit species in the tumor cells. This is a very difficult experiment. And uh, you can see, we do have different uh, oxidase inhibit species in the tumor cells. When you catch it with interferon, you see some. Uh, we, you catch it with uh, ferroptosis inducer, you, you, you see more. When you put them together, you see even more. So uh, then we directly examined the interferon in vivo system. So this is uh, the human tumor cell line we uh, shoot into the NSG mice and treat with the interferon. And this now is sensitive to, 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 to uh, interferon. You see, interferon treatment can reduce the tumor growth. And uh, under this condition, you treat the mice with nivrostatin, the uh, anti tumor effect is much legal. So, therefore, we are pretty confident interferon is involved. Interferon could be from the CD8 T cells, it's involved. Now, how does interferon work? Because there are several pathways involved in the recognition of ferroptosis. Uh, we look at some of them. So uh, you can see one is XC system, as I mentioned, GX4, SCS4. We looked at all of them. So what do we found, to make a story short also, you can see through Angiosic and uh, single cell sequence and also Western blood, PCR, all kinds of things. You see, if you treat the cells with interferon, you do see reduced expression of uh, XC system, SCS3A2 and 7A11. As a consequence of this, you will see because uh, uh, X system actually just uh, put in uh, cysteine into the cells and you see reduced cysteine in the, in the cells and reduce GSH production because the cysteine can become cysteine and become GSH. And further, uh, you, you can see if you use small amount of ferroptosis in, in tumor, you can dramatically reduce GSH production in the tumor cells. So, uh, we further made a uh, connection to uh, patients with cancer, also not only just human cells, mouse cells, in vivo system, and in humans, uh, for example, the patient treated with immunotherapy, if the patient get a clinic benefit, they see reduced uh, SLC uh, system, 3A2, uh, of course, increased interferon and C8, not a surprise in patient. So what do we want to conclude here for this part? Uh, what do we want to conclude is, well, Classically speaking, CD8 T cell engage tumor cells and induce tumor cell apoptosis, very well defined as well. So what we want to add a previously unknown mechanism, CD8 T cells can release in film, engage tumor cells through XC system and induce or promote the of the tumor cells. This is a major mechanism 
maybe in certain situations, even more important than apoptosis. We don't know yet. However, there may be crosstalk between apoptosis and apoptosis. We are working on this, and um, we I don't have more to tell you under this condition. But at least the technical message for this part is tumor phenoptosis is a mode of action of CDLs. Uh, this is a novel mechanism people uh, uh, have not defined previously. We believe this not only uh, operational in a tumor, uh, it's operational in other systems. Means the CD8 T cell uh, interact with the target. Right? So maybe this is not only for CD8 T cells, but also for NK cells as well. So that's why it has a, uh, it's a simple experiment, but it has a profound impact uh, uh, in terms of basic uh, CT80 cell biology. So now I move to the second story I'm going to share with you, ACLC uh, 43A2. So this is more concerned about uh, uh, methionine metabolism. So in fact, we know um, in the cancer microenvironment, environment, you do have tumor cells, you know, cells, all kinds of other cells. And um, the cells are exposed to different metabolites, uh, even in physiologic states or in pathologic states. So you have these amino acids, nucleic acids, fatty acids, and a couple of hydrates, all kinds of things. So what we can be sure, the cells use different mechanisms to metabolize, to be functional. And also when they are exposed to this different environment, you change the state of the cells. So this is not only the case for the tumor cells, this is also the case for T cells and other cells. So for example, in the publications, uh, people have published quite a lot, you know, talking about some metabolites in the field, acetyl co a alpha he succinate, uh, NADs, and some other things. So what we know is from the first introduction of my work, we very early on, almost 20 years ago, we noticed that T cells are dysfunctional in the tumor microenvironment. And uh, another folks are involved in uh, dissecting the mechanisms of T cell dysfunction uh, in the tumor microenvironment. You can name the T cell exhaustion. And uh, so some folks talking about the epigenetic mechanisms and uh, metabolic mechanisms. So we were thinking at the end, if the T cells are dysfunctional, if you have epigenetic mechanisms and the metabolic mechanisms, there must be a crosstalk between them. So that's we come to the question we are asking um, in this case. So uh, apart from connectomysis pathways, uh, which we have worked on, uh, we also work on amino acid. We did very simple experiments in this case. Uh, you just uh, capture the T cells with uh, medium and um, then uh, you omit uh, each individual amino acid in the culture. Uh, so this could be essential any, uh, am, uh, uh, amino acids, non-essential amino acid. And then under this condition, you look at the T-cell function, T-cell survival. So it turns out without methionine, the T-cells are really uh, becoming apoptotic. The T-cells, before they die, they express very minimum uh, amount of effector cytokines, including in the film gamma. So suggesting my theory is in its unique position to affect T cell functionality and survival. So therefore, we move to the tumor mapping environment to mimic the situation. We just capture the tumor uh, subordinate and the T cells in the tumor subordinate. Then we add the individual amino acids back, see what's going on. It turns out uh, if we add uh, in the culture or methionine uh, to the culture, uh, you will see we can reduce the T cells, uh, apoptosis, increase T cell functionality. So, therefore, we believe uh, methionine metabolism, and metabolism in the tumor environment may be critical for T cell functionality in the survival. So, then uh, we started to explore uh, methionine metabolism in T cells. So under the culture, through the metabolic assay, you culture the tumor cells, sugar and then with the T cells, and you measure the T cell metabolites. So intracellular T cell metabolites such as methionine, and uh, if you culture it with the tumor sugar, you reduce this, you reduce uh, 
uh, the immediate metabolism same. And uh, uh, if you, uh, if you uh, add methionine back, you can recover methionine intracellularly, uh, partially recover same intracellularly, and also uh, SAH also partially recover. So this is basically shows uh, the basic uh, metabolic cycle of methionine. Methionine mean, uh, is uptaken by the cells, D cells in this case, becoming same and some other things. So uh, therefore, we think this may be very important. We look at the further mechanisms. As uh, you know, SAM is a major methotoner uh, in the cells. Uh, therefore, we speculate histone methylation may be affected. So we look at the T cells cultured with different sugar and dental in tumor with or without methionine supplementation. You can see here several uh, histone marks are not changed, but H3K79 demethylation. So you can see here, mouse cells and human cells. Not only in the culture system, but also in vivo, in mouse and uh, in humans. As you can see here, H3K79 demethylation is reduced uh, in the tumor, CD8 infiltration T cells, and particularly, but not in the spleen, for example not in the training influence, and uh, particularly just in the tumor. This is the case in human CD8 T cell, tumor infiltration T cells as well. So you see dramatic reduction of H3K7 and uh, both in vivo and in vitro and ex vivo, uh, in mouse and uh, in, in human. Now, we were thinking this is important. Then uh, we supplement uh, methionine to P16 bearing mouse model. Supplementation of methionine can reduce tumor. Can we cover H3K79 in vivo? Can we cover the intracellular methionine? Can we cover CD8 T cell function in vivo? Then we did it in patient, a patient with colorectal cancer and uh, supplemented with methionine and look at the T cells and you can see here, and uh, uh, methionine supplementation can we cover H3K79 uh, demethylation and uh, in different patients you can see. And it recovers also the stat expression. So it recovers uh, the TCL functionality such as IL-2 production from different patients and some other cytokines in those patients supplemented with methionine. So, and how does methionine work? And uh, affect uh, H3K7 methylation when we look at uh, uh, the promoters of STAT5, it turns out there is a high occupancy, particularly of H3K79 demethylation in the STAT5 uh, B promoter area. And uh, we did GBSA and uh, we show this the case. And in fact, uh, in the uh, in vivo studies, if you, uh, in vitro studies, you, if you culture the tumor cells, supernatant with the T cells, T cell um, uh, occup the occupancy of H3K79. Uh, in the stat five is reduced, Sub, uh, supplementation of methionine can recover this. And this supplementation can recover, as I said, stats, you see key all in vivo this, and uh, recover uh, H3K79 in CD8 T cells, and uh, in, vi in vivo, in different tumors, can recover stat, recover uh, T cell functionality. So further, we want to understand, so why, Methionine is a problem. So one possibility is maybe the tumor cells compete methionine uh, with the T cells and consume a lot of methionine. The T cells cannot get access to the methionine in this case. So we want to understand why is this. We look at the methionine transporters, uh, quite a few of them, because they are not functionally, uh, they are functionally uh, uh, redundant. So you can see, you compare CD T cells and tumor cells and other cells, uh, you see. Uh, actually, SCLC 43A2 is highly expressed in tumor cells. And this is not highly expressed in T cells. So you do Western blood, you see different tumors, and uh, you see uh, uh, SCLC 43A2 uh, in tumor cells, but not really in T cells. This is just serves as a control. And then we knock down 43A2 in tumor cells, and then the, uh, get the tumor shipment and then culture the T cells again. So you will see if we knock down 43A2 in the tumor, we can we rescue actually the T cell survival, we can rescue T cell functionality. 
uh, we did it in vivo, uh, knocked down 43A2 in tumor, in different models, uh, we can reduce tumor growth and we cover T cell functionality. So uh, what do we have here? Actually, in this part of my talk, we see in the tumor microenvironment, the tumor cells express high levels of HCLC 43A2. Out compete T cells for the methion through the transporter 43A2. And this affects the methylamin availability to the T cells, affects the T cell uh, uh, histone modification, particularly H3, H7, and methylation. Therefore, step five is dysfunction and uh, the expression level is down. Uh, this causes T cell dysfunctionality. So we believe this metabolic and epigenetic crosstalk uh, is at least one of the major mechanisms uh, contribute to the T cell dysfunctionality or T cell exhaustion, uh, whatever you want to say, uh, in the tumor microenvironment. So we are suggesting, you know, we if we want to target methionine, maybe we can target the, the transporters, uh, particularly tumor transporter, uh, ACLC 43. So the question is, uh, uh, the proposal people have, uh, we can stop uh, cancer cells to death. So usually when we see this, we do not consider the very immune system. This is wrong. Because at the end, you need to have the immune system to control the tumor, no matter what kind of therapy you have. This is a, a serious lesson we humans learn from uh, the bio, uh, antibiotic therapy. If you say anything, the most important discoveries in human history in biomedical field is antibiotics. But as you know, if you don't have a functional immune system, antibiotics do not work. So it means antibiotics can cure the vast majority of the bacteria. However, the residue bacteria, you have to have memory system, you have to have T cells to kill uh, those infected cells. This is the same in tumor. We will never be able to kill all the tumor cells in our body, particularly when the patient have metastasis through any other mechanisms. So only the immune system will take care of this. So therefore, if you start cancer cells to death, you may start T cells to death as well. So, so in the best way, we can say you kill a thousand, your cell defeat eight hundred. But at least at the end, you defeat yourself basically. So, what is the next generation of cancer therapy? To answer the, the, this question, uh, we think at least uh, immunotherapy is the basis. Uh, so the reason is. T cells kill the tumor cells, and the T cells remember to kill again. I think that's a very important message, and people have to keep in mind. This does not undermine the other types of therapy, the other such as targeted therapy, such as chemotherapy, such as radiation therapy, and such as other uh, gene therapy. For example. But at the end, we have to keep this in mind. If you do any harm to the T cells, we may not be finally reach our goal, means cure the patient. Uh, I stop here, and it's also time. Uh, the first part of my talk uh, is really done um, by a uh, very talented fellow uh, in our group. Um, uh, so uh, by women and other folks, and uh, women now uh, is professor uh, in China. And the second part of my talk, uh, it's, talk, uh, it's by Dr. Inche uh, and uh, Wader. Wader is a professor also uh, in the university and, uh, and Inche is still with me. Of course, I do mention a lot of collaborations, particularly I greatly appreciate the collaboration, particularly early on uh, with Napin. It was uh, absolutely a pleasure to work with him. And uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, of course, if you have any questions, comments, I'm uh, pretty much welcome. I stop here. Uh, any questions? Uh, yes, uh, uh, Wei Ping, uh, this is Xiaolei. Uh, um, it's a really uh, uh, inspiring uh, talk. Um, so uh, I think I have uh, uh, two questions. Uh, 
So the first one is uh, about the first part. So the 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 these like uh, drugs for uh, either inhibiting or activating uh, phytoplasmosis. So they have like a profound effect on on the on the tumor cells. So are these drugs also affecting T cells? Yeah. Uh, so um, so the clear answer is I don't know. So the thing is. Uh, we are working on this. Um, uh, the thing, as far as I know, um, uh, particularly in vivo, uh, apart from the tumor uh, cell phytoplasmosis, we discovered uh, uh, whether the other cells, such as T cells, macrophages, and the immune system, and other cells, experience uh, important and functionally important field doses. This is a question people uh, have not uh, really discovered. So there, there was one paper uh, published very early on, it's a GBX4 knockout system. Uh, they show T cells experience field doses, which is very critical. GBX4 is very critical in this case. So I assume uh, the other cells will also experience field doses uh, in vivo. Uh, how important it is, uh, this is a question mark, right? So therefore, uh, to answer your question, in this case, uh, whether phytoptosis uh, inducers can uh, do anything to immune system, the answer probably yes. Uh, and how important it is, is unknown. I see, okay. Um, so uh, the, the other question I have is, um, so for the second part you mentioned like these, uh, uh, Messionine transporters can be targeted, and uh, also like there, there, there are like uh, multiple uh, transporters. Uh, so I just wonder, uh, uh, do you vision how specific will will be the, will these like potential uh, inhibitors uh, will be, or um, this might be naive. Like, is it like simply like a, a supply masami is 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 able to also like rescue some of the T cells defects in vivo? Uh, yeah, uh, that's also a good question. Actually, uh, it is. Uh, we, you know, uh, when we are talking about um, metabolic control, metabolic reprogramming, with uh, and the target metabolic pathways for therapy. Uh, uh, I would say um, I, it is not an easy job. Mm -hmm. uh, so first of all, um, the transporters are functionally uh, um, overlapping with many others and uh, functionally redundant, as you know. And then different transporters can do the same thing. Uh, different uh, the same the same transporter can do different things, right? So, but what we want to emphasize here, when we are talking about the therapy there is a uh, uh, window opportunity. That's what we are talking about. Uh, for example, if uh, some transporters are predominantly functional and expressed and functional in the tumor cells, uh, not necessarily in the effective T cells, for example, then you may have a window opportunity to treat the patient. That's why we need to understand this patient, mm -hmm. right? So if you want to have a absolute specific uh, therapy uh, targeted uh, uh, because you are talking about two things specific to a particular cell, specific to a particular transport. So the, you have this is it's very much very challenging, you know. But the, the, the knowledge came from the field will be very important, and uh, we are we are have things to 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 to, to provide some insight, you know, uh, for further development. So that's why. And to see the predominant effect, to see the, pre, uh, the major expression uh, are very critical. Okay, uh, that's, that, that's great. Um, and uh, uh, also like, uh, do you think like just by simply supplementing methionine is like local supplementation of methionine is able to rescue some of the T cell defects? Yeah, so we supplement uh, in uh, tumor model and also in patient with cancer to mm -hmm. see uh, 
the effect of methionine, right? Uh, we see the T cells are functioning better. Uh, this is only to demonstrate the principle. Uh, whether we directly supplement this, uh, methionine, uh, we are able to, uh, to provide some clinic benefit to the patient uh, and result in improved cancer immunity and even tumor control. This is this question we have not addressed. Okay. Oh, okay. So the thing is, uh, this is a possibility. Once again, we may have to see in which patient population, uh, whether uh, methionine supplementation, yeah, uh, methionine uh, deficiency, it's a major mechanism in that particular tumor. Mm -hmm. I, you know, so once again, we, we need to understand that, right? Okay, okay, great. Okay, that's, that's wonderful. Yeah, thanks, Wei Ping. Yeah, the key is to keep uh, immune system into consideration when you do anything, if ever possible. So mm -hmm. I guess that's my message I want to say. So I see actually there are two questions from, uh, from the audience. So one is from Bo Gong. Uh, what, uh, what Dr. Wu, uh, he asked, he or she, I have no idea, are there tumor in Drizic oncogenic pathways and the mutation that could drive phytoptosis resistance? Uh, this is also a great question. Uh, we look at some um, uh, uh, well-defined uh, uh, pathways associated with uh, phytoptosis. At least, whether do we, do we see mutations, right? Uh, oncogenic mutations, uh, and we need to do this. So, some metabolic genes are involved. Uh, we cannot say they are really metabolic, uh, they are really uh, phytoptosis uh, driven. Uh, all these uh, pathways, we are, uh, oncogenic pathways, will directly affect phytoptosis because the thing is, uh, the phytoptosis pathways and other pathways are in between. It's hard to say this one is really. Uh, affected another way. So uh, I guess I, I cannot give you a real clean, clean answer in that space. So uh, to, it is another question. Um, so uh, Hu Zhen, uh, what happened to the four patients treated with methionine supplementation? Did it improve their cancer progression and survival? So um, it's a, uh, it's, uh, uh, I know people want to understand this, and uh, I would love to know as well. But uh, what I can tell you uh, to set to set up a clinical study like this, it's already very very challenging. Anything once you treat this patient, it's awful. Okay, uh, it's critical, but it's awful. So what we did is for those patients, we, we if you read our nature paper, it's not only just the four patients. We treat uh, uh, fifteen patients, and finally we are able to follow those patients, and you know, and not all of them they just. Uh, uh, they quit and, and all kinds of things, right? Uh, finally, based on the criteria, we have seven or eight patients, you know, they performed the whole thing. And it turns out, uh, you know, for all those patients, uh, we treated them before surgery because all the patients are subject to surgical department. So that's why we can get the tissues, get the blood and get, get things out. So therefore, we are not able in that particular clinic setting, we are not able to follow the patient therapeutic response and the uh, outcome. Right, so I, I just sorry to say I, I want to explain to you what's going on. Right, so uh, yeah, um, so uh, there was uh, uh, okay. So it's another question uh, here. Uh, can interferon? Let's see. Uh, can uh, so G G A O? Okay, I, no first name, no nothing. I don't know. So, uh, but uh, I. Uh, Interfering gamma induces uh, phytoptosis of T cells. Yes, uh, this is also another question. And basically, I have answered the only one Shani asked, you know, because we even don't know whether T cells uh, can experience phytoptosis. Okay. Uh, we, we, I, I, so there are some evidence people have published, but the, those published work, I would say, need additional information to, to, uh, to, 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 to support uh, this is absolute case. So we don't know. Okay. Uh, well, another question is uh, from Bohan. Uh, how does methionine activate the T cell, uh, which in turn to perform the CD activity? Any methionine, uh, hold on, uh, well, it's moved away. Receptor. Uh, uh, any methionine receptor. Well, methionine, it's, it's not about the receptor, it's uh, actually about the transporter. So the methionine can be transported through the methionine uh, transporters into the T cells. And then the T cells use methionine uh, to incorporate into the methionine metabolism, which as I, I show you here, uh, this metabolism is critical for the T cells, right? Uh, so, uh, because this is an amino acid, you know, so, 
um, yeah, can other cancer patients benefit from uh, uh, methylene apart from melanoma? So actually, the patient that we have uh, methylene supplementation is not melanoma. It's um, it's called colorectal cancer because we we initially we want to have a patient with methylene uh, with uh, with uh, with melanoma, but uh, we were not able to get those, uh, those patients uh, to, to do that. So is the ferroptosis induced by T-cells adapted to multiple tumors or only to some uh, specific types? Uh, the answer is, I don't know, you know, uh, and also uh, we believe, you know, uh, different tumors, particularly different environment uh, may, may have different ways to go. So, uh, so in my mind, maybe uh, some tumors will experience uh, predominant ferroptosis, some others will be uh, uh, apoptosis, maybe other forms of cell death, or maybe it's a mixture. So just keep in mind, you know, when you have a research paper, uh, the one single research paper uh, is not able to address uh, the whole field. So that's why that's the limitation. And uh, if you are interested in this, you know, you can uh, hopefully we can have more stories uh, later on. Uh, so then there is another question. Uh, so so now does uh, now does it uh, and so how to pronounce this? Anyway, sorry. Uh, when you introduce Philippos's concept. You mentioned uh, LX, uh, enzymes apart from, let me see, what is this? Uh, uh, apart from membrane limits, uh, NOx can produce different uh, oxygenities which act uh, as no core signal uh, molecules. Do you consider uh, then as a possible mechanism? Yes, it's a possibility. Uh, maybe for uh, for tumor cells and also it, it for these cells as again. I, I really don't have data, you know. So at this days, uh, as Xiaoli and other folks, you will know, uh, if you don't have data, you don't see. Uh, I, I truly have no data. So therefore, uh, I, I cannot really provide a, uh, an answer for you. But there's some publications uh, in tumors, yes. In tumors, there's a possibility uh, because people have some evidence for that, right? Uh, I think that's 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 all I can see from, uh, I hope I get happy for May I ask one question, uh, Weiping? So, um, does the structure of the this transporter SRC forty three A two get solved? No. Nope. Oh. So it's your job. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, so the question is, you know, uh, uh, I wrote a review article uh, about uh, the SRC. So we we will have more papers in that space, right? So the ACLC family members, I think they are around four, 500. So, uh, un, so the vast majority of the structures are not known. So that's mm -hmm. unfortunate. So this is uh, because somehow uh, the industry and the also academic institutions focus on um, G proteins. Uh, so you can imagine, you know, uh, because uh, somehow uh, this could be uh, more druggable. Uh, people have done a lot of work in that space. But uh, ACLC family members, if you guys are interested in, I would love to, to have whatever enables collaboration. Um, uh, so ACLC family mem members are really poorly understood. And even different ACLC family members uh, in different cells, uh, in physiological and pathological conditions are poorly understood. I need to need to say uh, they are structures, right? So I, I hope also this uh, talk can stimulate uh, additional uh, discussions and the interest in that in that space, you know. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, any more questions? Yeah, it seems uh, since it's okay, and uh, people have uh, asked a lot of questions. If you have more questions, uh, any comments, uh, you're welcome to just email me. Uh, I would say it's uh, absolutely great pleasure to. Uh, meet many of you. I see almost 300, uh, it, uh, 200 uh, students. Uh, if you if you um, have any interest in collaboration, uh, yeah, you know uh, I appreciate that. And also, I add one more word here. Uh, as I said previously in this uh, platform, uh, uh, so we are in the community. Uh, we need to support each other. Uh, sometimes, you know, uh, particularly for myself, for example, I have been involved in uh, many uh, scientific journals and, and the board members and associate editor, uh, section editor or advisor whatsoever, right? Uh, I often invite uh, some of you, I hope more, uh, to help me to review papers. Uh, I do appreciate your, 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 your effort. It's a community effort. 
and also once you, uh, particularly for junior faculty, once you are more involved uh, in this process, your name will be in the record and uh, people will uh, need your help. And then uh, when you are helping the others and you also help yourself, right? I think that's very important. And uh, that's why I say it again and again, this is uh, absolutely a great uh, platform to communicate and to support each other. Yes, you are in, it is indeed true. Thank you very much, Wei Ping, uh, for uh, giving us this great talk. Thank you so much. All right, uh, see you all and uh, you have a great day. Yeah, see you, have a good day.